precision delivery of medicine. Entertainment franchise games absolutely exploding. Small modular reactors and the nuclear renaissance, plus AI moving into very complex workflows. Now, these were just a few of the major tech innovations that partners at A16Z predicted last year. And our partners are back, and we just dropped our list of over 40 plus big ideas for 2024, a compilation of critical advancements across all our verticals, from smart energy grids to crime detecting computer vision, to democratizing miracle drugs like GLP-1s, or even AI moving from black box to clear box. You can find the full list of 40 plus builder worthy pursuits at a16z.com slash big ideas 2024 or you can click the link in our description below. But on deck today, you will hear directly from one of our partners as we dive even more deeply into their big idea. What's the why now? What opportunities and what challenges are on the horizon? And how can you get involved? Let's dive in. As a reminder, the content here is for informational purposes only. Should not be taken as legal, business, tax, or investment advice, or be used to evaluate any investment or security and is not directed at any investors or potential investors in any A16Z fund. Please note that A16Z and its affiliates may also maintain investments in the companies discussed in this podcast. For more details, including a link to our investments, please see a16z.com slash disclosures. Hi, I'm Kimberly Tan. Um, I'm an investing partner at Andrews and Horowitz on the American Dynamism and the Enterprise team. And this is my big idea for 2024. I believe that in 2024, we'll likely see new applications of computer vision and video intelligence in the real world. I think leveraging insights from video data has become pretty commonplace in the enterprise to help companies make better informed business decisions. But this capability could be even more powerful in the real world, given how the rich and comprehensive the nature of the available data is. However, many industries today still lack modern systems to actually capture and make sense of that video. And oftentimes customers actually have no existing video infrastructure or use pretty legacy video systems that are difficult to integrate if you actually want to use modern software. So we see businesses tackling this problem by leveraging a hardware and software model, allowing them to sell both the hardware video cameras as well as the software to customers. These businesses often tailor the go-to-market approach to target a very specific customer and best serve those particular needs. So for instance, companies like Flock Safety are examples of this hardware and software model where they've built large businesses around keeping residential neighborhoods and schools safe, um, respectively, for example. And we think that the same success could be found in other industries, such as, for example, transportation, industrials, agriculture, or mining. All right, Kimberly, so this in a way is a whole new twist on the idea of software is eating the world. In this case, it's software is eating the physical world in a way. So maybe you could just give us a sense of just how much video is actually currently being captured. Yeah, definitely. And by the way, I think software eating the physical world is a great articulation of the broader American dynamism thesis that we have at the firm that we're really excited to invest behind. I would say there's there's a vast amount of video data that is being captured, just given the general prevalence of cameras, either on smartphones or just um, in a lot of places that we live our day to day lives. And I think the real question is how much of that data is actually being captured and utilized in some interesting way versus just you know, passively existing on different devices and not actually being analyzed or processed in any way. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And I think we're all very familiar with how much data each of us individually is capturing. But what unlocks in the hardware or the software to process the data actually allow us to better leverage this video and um, also maybe have contributed to just how much data is being collected? I would say like the reason why I'm particularly excited about um, this thesis uh, in the next year or so is I feel like it's the confluence of a lot of things that are finally good enough that we're always on the cusp of being possible, but now um, have hit some cliff that we can see really large venture scale outcomes. So for example, um, just like the proliferation of cameras and availability of videos, there's just more cameras getting installed for different use cases where the insights aren't being leveraged as widely as they could. So like I mentioned, either on people's smartphones, there's all these home nest cameras that are getting built out. Um, there's cameras in people's workplaces, traffic cameras, et cetera. Um, and I think the availability of actually just even having the data there is one thing that we're reaching a tipping point on. The second is I would say the tech just becoming broadly more 
uh, cost efficient and uh, available. So first through like cloud cost dropping such that you can actually do more computation in the cloud, which has historically been a barrier given just how much data there is residing in video and how expensive it is to process that data. Um, and then secondly, on that point, like increases in edge computing capacity through cheaper chips and camera quality per dollar, allowing you to run more complex and larger models on better cameras at lower cost and thus reducing any sort of bandwidth constraints you would have had in actually sending it to the cloud. So I think the tech becoming more efficient is um, a second reason why we're really excited. Uh, the third would be like just broadly innovation on the models themselves. So everybody I feel like now knows transformers and how exciting it's been for like generative AI innovations that we're seeing in things like ChatGPT. Um, and while transformers were designed for language tasks um, initially, they've actually been applied in vision um, applications as well and works quite well for things like image classification and object detection um, versus the status quo previously. So I think seeing transformers applied in the vision space will be really exciting. Um, just see through using something like generative AI where you can query with natural language instead of having to um, write a bunch of code to actually look through it and understand it in a meaningful way. Totally. I, I also think there's just like a business model understanding question, which a lot of people thought for a long time that selling into these difficult verticals was tough. Um, and I think now that we have companies like Flock Safety proving that it is possible, um, people can apply those lessons into other verticals where it hasn't currently been applied yet. Absolutely. So it sounds like there is an element of the cost curve changing elements of innovation and specifically LLMs changing the game and maybe through that business models evolving. Could you speak to maybe some of the applications that you think can emerge here? I mean, you mentioned transportation, agriculture, industrials and mining. Give us a sense of the types of applications that might sprout from these different factors coming together. Yeah. Um I want to preface by saying there's probably like way more than we can even envision. So of these course. are just examples that I think are exciting. But in transportation, for example, there's a lot of back and forth that happens with just essentially confirming that you're giving the right item to the right person at the right time and charge the correct amount. And today, a lot of that is done through very manual emails, invoice processing, reconciliation, confirmation of receipt of items, compliance on specific tariffs, et cetera. And a lot of that through computer vision, you can identify that this was the item that we gave to this person at this time and just cut out a lot of that inefficiency. Um, I think industrials and um, like other um, like pretty large scale industries like that, there's a lot of labor or OSHA compliance on workplace safety and conditions that have to be met that inspectors come by. You often have to fill out all these checklists and make sure. And through computer vision, none of which requires actually monitoring the people themselves, you can make sure that the conditions are safe for the folks who work there. Um, and then in something like agriculture, you know, the bread and butter of that industry is livestock or crops or whatever you're growing. And I think there's a lot of insights that you can be gained without having to have somebody manually looking at it all the time about making sure that the weather conditions are, are correct or the crops are healthy and such. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And I think people can easily imagine those use cases but what about the use cases where this video is deeply ingrained in our everyday lives? I think the natural question as it relates to that scenario is how we avoid the kind of intelligence that is a slippery slope into, you know, a big brother scenario or something like that. How do you see or how would you calm those concerns or how do you see regulation potentially playing a role in this maybe video centric world that you're describing? Yeah, I think this is a really important question and topic that all companies in the space and we monitor pretty closely. Um, I think privacy should and will continue to be a very important question. And I think like it, it's hard to say how regulations will shake out, but there's a lot of things that companies can do around both data rights and data privacy concerns to make sure who actually owns the data at rest. There's lots of things around how long you're actually allowed to store the video for. And even in computer vision itself, like what are you tracking? Um, are you tracking, for example, just the license plate? Are you tracking just the position of a certain piece of equipment at a certain time instead of tracking any individual person? Um, so I think there's a lot that can be done to make sure that people's privacy rights are protected while allowing us to use the technology in a way that makes people's lives better. But it is one where I think companies have to work very closely with the stakeholders on both the regulatory as well as the 
personal and business side to make sure that everyone feels comfortable. Absolutely. And of course, this is a big idea for 2024. So we spoke a little bit to this and the different trends coming together. But why do you think this is the year where we're really going to see a tipping point in terms of widespread adoption? And maybe you could just speak a little bit more to what you hope to see builders um, come and work on this coming year. We've talked a little bit about this before, but I think it's just a lot of things coming together to make this the right time to do it, um, both on the cost side. I think there's a little bit of like a labor element of labor shortages in a lot of the industries that we were talking about that maybe open the door to software innovation where people um, were not as used to buying software in the past. Um, I think that the general focus that people have on AI today naturally lends itself to the question of, where else can AI be applied that isn't um, what we've been seeing with all the exciting generative creative stuff um, and thinking about how these technologies can actually work in these more like brick and mortar physical use cases. Um, and then I think, yeah, like a lot of companies have now grown up to be successful companies that have employed this model and a lot of new founders who are starting companies looking to see which companies they admire will have these companies as models to um, potentially emulate or take lessons from, whereas that wasn't true a couple of years ago. All right. I hope you enjoyed this big idea. We do have a lot more on the way, including a new age of maritime exploration that takes advantage of AI and computer vision, plus AI versus games that never end, and whether voice first apps may finally be having their moment. By the way, if you want to see our full list of 40 plus big ideas today, you can head on over to a16z.com slash big ideas 2024. It's time to build.